Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Coral and today I'm a little bit late. I know, but this is my wrap up for March. My dog's barking. He can't be inside because he makes too much noise, but then if he's outside, he barks. So what do I do with him? I don't know. He's a big monster. Anyways, sorry. So I was able to complete nine books this month. Two were audiobooks, so I guess I read seven. And with those seven books, I read 3,258 pages. So that is pretty cool. Uh, I put a lot on my plate this month and I finished almost all the books that I wanted to get to. Um, there was one I picked up and I just like was not feeling it. Uh, so I put that one down. I'm gonna try to get back to it some other time, maybe. Um, and then another book that I wanted to read this month, I didn't. So I did pretty good otherwise, sticking to my TBR, which I feel, I know this is weird and like those don't even really matter but I really like making TBRs because I like having a list and I like just sticking to that list and I like making the list and I don't know, I'm just, I feel weird about it. So like, it's not that often that I deviate from a TBR list. But anyway, so if I break it down by rating this month, I had two two-star books. I had one three-star book, one three-and-a-half star book, then I had four four-star books, which is pretty good, and one that I rated five stars. So there were some not so good ones in here and there were some good ones in here. So I had a pretty, a fairly even reading month, I'd say. In a totally random order, I'm gonna get to these books. So for the first one that I'll talk to you about today was an e-arc that I had of The Dark Game by Jonathan Jans. Um, I got this from NetGalley, so thank you so much to NetGalley and to the publisher, Flame Tree Press, and Jonathan Jans. Uh, I gave this four stars. It was really good. I think that... Okay, so The Dark Game is about this group of writers, and they're going to this, like writing retreat that's kind of a disguise for this weird competition that they're taking place in and this is all put together by a man named Roderick Wells <laughs> who is a prolific author uh, and I'm I believe he mostly writes horror so the writers get there and they're all kind of like hard up um, some of them have done really well their books have done really well in the past, some of them uh, not so much. So they're all kind of struggling and are really looking forward to kind of being mentored by Wells, who is prolific, like I said. And this, this retreat is something that he's done before. And the woman who who was the last writer standing, I guess, kind of, went on to be hugely successful. So they're all really looking forward to, you know, hopefully being the one who is chosen. And as the writers start showing up, you get kind of their backstory and it seems like a lot of them have like secrets or have had really kind of awful pasts. So that plays into this whole game that Roderick Wells is uh, putting up. Since this is a horror novel, I don't wanna give away too much of the plot because that just kind of takes away from the story, I think. Um, but I will say that I thought this was really fast paced it was easy to read. I think that Jans does really good with his characters. I think that his development is great. And 
Um, in the beginning, it was a tiny bit confusing uh, because there was like so many characters at once. It was kind of hard for me to keep track of who was who, but once their pasts were more fleshed out, I guess, I don't know. Once we got deeper into their pasts, then it was easier for me to be like, oh yeah, that's that guy. I think another thing that Jonathan Jance does well is like the action in his writing. And a lot of it is just so well written. It, it's it's cinematic. It's like you're, like you can picture it like a movie in your head, which is really fun. So he does that well. I ended up giving this four stars. I also read The Sentinel by Jeffrey Convitz. Um, I gave this two stars. Uh, I don't know. I just think that it was not very good. It was really ridiculous um, and not in a good way because like some books are written like the author doesn't take themselves too seriously and so when they're ridiculous like that it's like charming and funny but this like was just too much. It was just too much. I also finished up The Talisman by Stephen King and Peter Straub and this I feel like i read a year ago. It's crazy um, that this was just earlier this month. So this is a big chunky ass book and um, I guess since this is part of my Dark Tower read or my Dark Tower journey, I'm not gonna go too in depth into this. Um, I ended up giving it three stars. It's kind of the story of a boy named Jack Sawyer and his mom is sick, she has cancer. And he's kind of, like it's just him and his mom. His dad has died. It doesn't seem like they have any family members whatsoever. And um, so he is really scared. He's only 12, I can't remember if I mentioned that, but he's only 12, so he's at uh, an age where you're already going through enough shit. So like, it's sad and he finds that maybe he might be able to save his mom, but he has to flip over into like an alternate universe, kind of, called the Territories. I don't know, some of that is super weird because it's like kind of like the string theory, you know? Um, and I liked a lot of this book, but I just thought it was way too long. And since he's like, it's like a story about him going on a journey. It was like, I just don't need 1,000 pages of that, I guess. I don't know. I'll go more in depth when it comes up in my Dark Tower thing. Um, I also finished Vermilion, which was also one that I couldn't finish all the way in February. Um, this one I did a full review on, uh, but there is spoilers. So to be not so spoilery, spoilery here, Vermilion is like a supernatural kind of sci-fi-ish book <laughs> about um, Lou Merriweather and she's a psychopomp and that is basically like an exorcist and um, she gets tasked with finding out why a lot of the young men from Chinatown in San Francisco where she lives, why they're going up north for work and disappearing. Uh, this takes place in, I think the late 1800s, but it's, it's not like our 1800s in San Francisco. Uh, it's kind of interesting. There's like talking bears and stuff. So that's what she does. She goes up to find out why there's all these young men disappearing. Like they go up there for work and they don't write back and that's weird. That's not normal. Uh, and I thought this this was pretty good. I, I like the writing here and I really liked Lou. She was such a great character. And I, I actually think that all the characters in this book were great. Even the villains were like, mm, I love to hate them. There was some maybe questionable representation in here. Uh, just because it was kind of used as like a surprise 
this. <laughs> so that was a little bit strange. But even with that, I thought that it was a good book. I gave this four stars. Next, I read The Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen King. This is like his fantasy book, um, which I guess the talisman kind of basically is fantasy too. But like I said with the talisman, since this is part of my Dark Tower journey, I will eventually be doing a longer discussion about this book. But just a short summary, this is a story about two brothers. There's Peter and Thomas, and they are princes. Eventually their father dies and Peter gets framed for his father's murder. And he gets sent to live like up in a tower since he's a prince, he doesn't get executed but he gets like banished to this top of this like 300 foot tall tower. I gave this one, I gave this one four stars, but I could probably be talked into giving it three stars because when I read it, I liked it. But there are some things that when I go back and think about it hard enough, it's like, yeah, maybe this was just okay instead of like better than okay, I don't know. Worth the read. I think that this is really, this would probably be uh, an okay book for someone in like the young adult age group. It doesn't have a lot of Stephen King's like really creepy weird stuff. There's a little bit of it, but not as much as his other, some of his other works. So I gave that four stars also, a very loose four stars. I also finished Morningstar this month, which is the third book in the Red Rising series. That is a science fiction dystopian series um, about, I, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you about Morningstar since it's a sequel, but it's a continuation of the story of a man named Darrow who realizes that his life mining in the dark depths of Mars and like living in caves, maybe isn't just. <laughs> like maybe just because he was born doing this doesn't mean that he should have to do it his whole life. And um, so this kind of goes from there. I really like this series. I think the first book was probably my favorite. The second was, well, it was okay. This one I liked better than the second book, but not quite as much as the first book. There's a lot of action in here. It is a series that has a lot of like political stuff, <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's a power struggle since it's dystopian, you know, there's obviously problems with their government. So that kind of innately makes it political. Yeah, I gave this four stars. I would definitely recommend this series. I thought it was great. Um, there's some decent action scenes. There's some really good characters in here. Severo is just the best. Yeah, there's some blood and some guts and there's some kissing and there is the wolf pack. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, this is good though. This is a great end to a series, I think. As far as the books I read this month, um, this is my five star read of this month. And probably, I think this will be one of the best books I read this year. And that was My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I read this so fast. Now I'm kind of wishing I hadn't read it so fast. This was so great. And before I even get into the story, I just need to show you. I mean, you can see this, it looks like a yearbook. And look at all this inside. It's like a yearbook and it's so great. I love it so much. Um, I don't know, there's like this section in the end, like, like in high school yearbooks, you know, they do the, you can buy their kind of like ad space kind of. Um. So there's just that, which is incredible. 
I think Grady Hendrix books are all so special because of this weird stuff that the publisher chooses to put in for him. It's so great. Um, this book. This takes place in the 1980s in America, obviously. Um, this is the story of Abby and Gretchen. They are best friends and Gretchen gets possessed. But the thing about it is like, it's really insidious. So Abby thinks that this is what happened, but she doesn't really know because obviously the demon inside of Gretchen doesn't want Abby to know about it. So a lot of it is like Abby struggling, trying to help her friend, but not knowing how, not knowing if like Gretchen is acting strange because they're teenage girls and sometimes teenage girls change. So it really grabs your heart. Um, and I just want to know how Grady Hendrix wrote from the perspective of a teenage girl so good because it really captures that like the aspects of having a best friend, you're like growing up with a best friend and having that best friend from, you know, eight years old to when you're going through high school and um I think that made this book so special so there is that the friendship that really just like makes your heart all gooey and there is some really gross parts um not too many of them so if that bothers you um you don't you don't have to worry about that too much it's not the whole book it's just a couple parts but those were great and the end just made me kind of like, like my <laughs> breath got all hitched. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I would recommend it to anybody. It was so fucking good. Okay, um, as far as the two audiobooks I listened to goes, um, the first one I finished was Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This one was kind of like an alternate historical fiction. It takes place after the Civil War. So the Civil War happens and then instead of the soldiers remaining dead, they like get up and are zombies. So this takes place just a couple years after that. And the premise of this whole story is that slavery has been abolished uh, but only because the United States decided that since there is a much greater enemy at hand, they need to band together. However, black folks are not treated equally still, even though there's not really slavery. There is, the, our main character is biracial. She gets or chooses kind of, it's like inevitable that she's gonna have to do something like this. She goes to the school um, for, they call them attendants, and basically they're zombie killers for white women. And we follow her through that school. She's a pretty good main character. Her name is Jane and she's sassy and smart and kind of that typical. <laughs> young adults main character um but she has a i think she has a good head on her shoulders she kind of doesn't take shit from anybody um it's a little bit endearing but she also like kind of doesn't mind her own business she goes up she ends up going to see why one of the white families in the area of the school has kind of disappeared and she gets herself into a mess so I thought I gave the, I ended up giving this three and a half stars. I thought that the writing was pretty good. I liked the main character. I thought the audio narrator freaking hit it out of the park. She was so good. Um, but there was just something lacking and I can't even quite put my finger on it. It was like kind of that the, the main character was so well fleshed out, but like nobody else around her was, I don't know. It, they were all kind of one-dimensional characters. And I thought that it was probably longer than it had to be. Yeah, because I think the physical book is over 400 pages 
and I just don't feel like that there was that much content in there, you know what I mean? But I gave it three and a half stars. I thought it was pretty, I thought it was like better than just okay, but not quite a four star read. And the last book I'm gonna talk about today is Elevation by Stephen King. I also listened to the audiobook of this. I don't know, you guys. Um, I guess I don't even want to really, I don't know. okay, so. The plot is that there is a man, Scott, and he finds that he is like losing weight, but he's not losing mass. Like he's lighter than he was before, but his body is the same. And like anything that he touches starts to lose weight too. So um, he, he's continuing to lose weight and it's kind of a story about that, but like also kind of a story about him not getting along with his neighbors or like trying to get along with his neighbors. And I think that this was supposed to be kind of like a heartfelt, heartwarming story, but I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't care for it. Um, I think that, I guess Stephen King felt like he had to tell the story, but I don't know why. And I don't think I got anything out of it. It was just, I don't know, I ended up giving it two stars. It was just, it wasn't like bad. It still had Stephen King's, you know, flair. Um, so it was like kind of funny sometimes and the characters were all right, but I feel like I just kind of wasted my time on that one. Luckily it's very short, but I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't care for it. I gave it two stars. All right. Well, that is my late wrap up for March. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you uh, very soon in another video. But until then, see you later, alligators.